All right. First off, it's cold in here. Yes, it's a little better. All right, let's make sure we're online. That is filming. As is this one. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Day three on the floating shelf project. We begin with a little bit of cleanup. My bench is a little bit cluttered. Once again, I did some shopping today. I bought a few things for the for the workshop. Extension cord reel overhead. That's gonna go right up there eventually. As you can probably hear, I also brought a microphone. You can actually hear what I'm talking about. Not that I think anybody really is going to care. So as I said, we're day three of the floating shelf build. Got two of the shelves complete. They just need to be... Um, What's the word? They need a little bit of finish work on them. A little bit of filling. A little bit of sanding. And then, lastly, some stain. Put that back. This doesn't need to be here. It goes back on the wall of many tools. Wall of many things. It's garbage. More light. Oh. Let's see if we can bang out this last piece, last custom piece. That's right now I haven't actually opened a YouTube account or a YouTube creator account anyway. If that's a thing. I don't know. I don't know how this all works. Um, I've been shooting everything for three days. I finally got this mic going, so I think this will be the video that actually makes the cut. <sighs> I think you'll be able to hear all the commentary. If you care about that sort of thing. Two cameras set up, one over there. Got the iPad up on the shelf. I downloaded Final Cut Pro just the other day in anticipation of doing the edit for this. I typically use iMovie to edit all my short form or Instagram reels. It works, but it's not super sophisticated. I think with Final Cut Pro, I'll be able to make some pretty slick content. Those neighbors of mine really know how to slam a door and stomp around 
and generally make too much noise. Real pet peeve of mine is unnecessary noise. There's no reason to be stomping around. There's no reason to slam your car door shut. Uh, hey, if you live on your own property, do all you want. But this is communal living. And I don't like unnecessary noise. I try to keep as quiet as possible. I don't stomp around. Unnecessary. Okay, this final shelf. This time I'm going to rip. Rip the full length. Because yesterday when I tried to cut the piece first and then rip them. It ended up causing me some headaches. And didn't necessarily give me any better product than I had with the first shelf that I assembled. That sounds terrible. I think this saw will need a tune-up. I don't know, maybe I should invest in a little bit nicer table saw. This is great for hauling around to the job site, but I don't know how accurate it is for uh, cabinetry and custom woodworking. What do I need? I don't really need these right now. This is going to be my new push stick, so that's going to stay here. That'll be its new home. This is, I don't know what that is. Having a little drinky poo tonight in the workshop because this is supposed to be relaxing work right am I right one sheet one remnant of a sheet and ooh that was floppy and the other one once again, this is just to protect the table surface. I love my work table. I don't want to be wrecking it. Right? Now do I want to use this side or that side? You know, I ask them at the store to give me the best pieces they have. I'm not a huge fan of the grain of this one because this is actually going to be the countertop which will be the most visible of all three pieces. I'd like to avoid having a giant knot in it. Yeah, I think we'll go with this side. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to try to do this quickly today too because yesterday one of my sheets ended up it ended up curving a little bit and it made the glue up really difficult so i'll try to do it quickly today <sighs> just a horse of a man With a giant gut. Hey, look at all this room I have now. That's amazing. There's a few things I do need to get out of this workshop. Like my bikes. Pardon me, my bike. I don't have multiple bikes. One of those belongs to my wife. Um... So what do we do first? We back bevel this edge, 10 degrees, is that it? Which requires use of this and to be spun around. Oh, yeah, sawdust in the eye. It's great. Stomp, 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 stomp. I wonder if the microphone will pick that up. 
Doubtful. Just trust me when I say it's annoying. AF. Why do you have to stomp everywhere? Like, do stompers know that they're stomping? If they do know they're stomping, then, then they're just rude. Okay. Is this supposed to go to Sally Ann? I forgot to drop that today when I went to go do my dump run. Which I may post a video of if people are interested in hearing me talk while driving for, I don't know, 25 minutes. That is sort of my hope with this channel. It's not, it's not, as you heard in the disclaimer, an instructional video. It's just watching a guy hanging out in his workshop, building stuff, and occasionally building stuff on site. Baby was sleeping. She's awake now. Next piece. I want to bevel it that way. We are going to spin. Oh dear. That dust collection works pretty well, I have to say. Where's my drink? Like I said, not an instructional video. I'm not here to teach you how to do things. I'm just showing you how I'm doing them. You're just watching. And if you learn something, that's great. 45 degree, no, part of me, 46. Because last time, last time I did 45 and a half. And the workpiece did not like that, I have to say. Yeah, I don't like... Yeah, look how much slop that is. That's terrible. Come on, Makita. You gotta do better than that. I bet the Festool doesn't have that much slop. Yeah, why? Why is that doing that? If you own one of these, please let me know. What am I doing wrong? Why is there so much slop? That's obscene. And I don't know which way is supposed to be 45. I'm guessing that way. That must be what this is. That's a 45 degree lockout. You put that over and it will not go more than 45, presumably. Which looks wrong to me. That looks like 44 degrees. Okay, 46 it is. Oh, now there's virtually no slop. Well, that's... That is beautiful. Okay, Makita, I take it back. But if it happens again, there's going to be problems. Clamps. Clamps. Specialty clamps. Oh, oh dear. Solo cup. That's where I was mixing some mixing some stains on the last one. They're not brilliant for that. I do need to get some proper measuring cups. Specifically for paint that are cheap and disposable. Is that too much to ask for? All right, those batteries are all right. Let's get the vacuum on. I got a little bit of that binding again. 
which I think is because my table saw is canted f forward. Sorry, canted backwards slightly. That was just my Mickey Mouse way of making sure that anything I'm running through this table would not catch on um, catch on the opening there. It just glides over top and it doesn't get caught up on anything. Okay. Now I want to check the smiter angle. I'm going to check that. What can I use? Maybe I can use the combo square. Definitely 46. Might even be a little bit more than that. Which is fine because I actually achieved a much better result with that on the first shelf than on the second, which was more likely a 45 and a half. Okay, here we go. That is the top of the counter. In other words, the countertop. Sometimes I feel like I'm just getting dumber. Anybody else ever feel that? All right, it's clamped. Oh. oh dear. I don't even know what I want to call this channel. Do I call it Estelle Mark's Garage? Do I call it. I don't know. We will just start with my name. I'll gladly take suggestions, but I'm not paying for any of them. I don't get any ideas. Back bevel done. Back bevel, is that even the right term? I don't know. Maybe. That's not a good idea. Remember what happened last time? I saw a foul. It'd be nice to have another set of hands that I don't have to pay. Perhaps my children one day. Child. Hopefully children. Uh, I thought I had a bunch of... I thought I had a bunch of rips. I guess this one will do. I have so much oak laying around, I wonder what to do with it. I agree if you can see the color difference just between these two. That is almost like white oak, apart from that huge grain. This looks more white oaky. You still got those pink undertones, which are notoriously difficult to uh, stain. Super difficult. I always have a hard time staining red oak. Especially if you're trying to match something else. <laughs> uh, now the shelves I made to a two inch height because they needed to accommodate a ledger around the perimeter, which would slot into the shelf. Like so. But I think it's going to look a little bit goofy if a countertop is two inches tall. Or two and a half, pardon me. I don't need the ledger board for that. I'm only doing the face, probably a three quarter inch return. Let's just make it an inch and a half plus. Plus and minus and heavy and light, the way I was taught anyway, is that heavy means one sixteenth more, light means one sixteenth less. 
Plus means one thirty second. It's a mouthful. One thirty second larger minus means one thirty second less. Yeah. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm even using a track saw to do these biters. Why wouldn't it be easier on a table saw? Probably. If I had a massive cabinet saw. Big saw stop. Saw stop. Chopping fingers. Pardon me. Chopping hot dogs. That's all they ever do. No chop fingers. I think the saw stop is a good idea for beginners. Just as an insurance policy. Um, but yeah, if you're a seasoned pro like myself, that's a joke. My guess is that people who are losing their fingers are probably trying to cross cut something that they shouldn't be. Or not using a sled while they're cross cutting. Or just, you know, being careless. That's all it is, is carelessness. Don't be careless now. Okay, that's ready. Vacuum. Did I mess it up? No. Well, that's shocking. Yeah, it's just carelessness. A friend of mine who has admittedly a really nice shop. Um... He has a, let's call it an extended family member. I don't want to make it too obvious, but he's going to know exactly who he is if he actually reads this or hears this. Uh, he somehow managed to cut a push stick, which for those of you who know what a push stick is, it's meant to be used on a table saw. Somehow he was using a push stick and cut the push stick on a miter saw. What was a push stick doing anywhere near a miter saw? Miter saw and push stick are not two words that should be even in the same sentence. Unless it's being used to describe what I am describing right now. But anyway, needless to say, He's no longer allowed back in that shop, at least without adult supervision. He's an adult. This is so annoying. That's the worst part about this, is having to flip the track around in my dinky little shop. Let's set that down over there. Now, did I flip this around again? Yes. Remove this spacer sheet. Which will inevitably become somebody's mantle, I'm sure. I would like to be able to start selling these mantles. I mean that's a that's a nice um a nice way to make a few bucks. Selling the mantles. People go nuts for these wrapped box mantles. And they're not particularly difficult to make. 
given the correct tools. So, in theory, some homeowner out there could, you know, they could try to build these. You could sell one of these mantles for probably a thousand bucks or more. Stained and installed. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, about a thousand bucks. Some people are going to think that's crazy, especially in the U.S. You got to remember that our dollar up here is shit. Ugh, I did it again. I trained my brain that I need to switch sides of the table every time I make a pass. And this time I didn't have to. Cut. Why did that happen? Why is there a bunch of... Blade seems to have taken some of my anti-splinter guard. Anti-splinter guard. Is it anti-splinter guard or just splinter guard? Is it guarding the splinters? Or is it guarding from splinters? But it took away some of the splinter guard with it. That's what all those black specks are. Which is annoying. I just replaced that. Because it was... It was mangled. From careless use. I'm generally not that careful with my tools. They don't last forever. So I care them care for them with just enough care. That they'll last me four, five, six years. In this line of work you're gonna be replacing a lot of tools. You're not going to be fixing them. It's <laughs> fixing tools nowadays, power tools. Unless it's a very expensive tool, I wouldn't even bother fixing it. I'd just get a brand new one. The Makita drill kits, for example, retail, like the cheapest or cheaper, cheaper professional one, let's say. You can get two batteries, an impactor, and a hammer drill for about 300 bucks plus tax. Um, to send one off for repair that's out of warranty is going to cost you probably 100 bucks. And if it takes two hours to repair a tool, then you got to mail it, then you got to ship it, and all this crap. Like it's going to end up costing more than the actual tool costs. I'm pretty sure that those tools are given away by these companies in kits just so they can sell the batteries. The batteries are what are valuable. Like a three amp hour battery, most of the time will retail between 90 and 110 bucks. You buy a drill kit with two tools and two batteries for 300 bucks. So how does that make sense? It's just the batteries. Anyway, I'm ranting. Uh, we have our three pieces. There's that one. This, I don't want to ever see it again. I hate it. It's very useful, but I don't like it. It annoys me. That's not true. Not the tools that annoy me, it's the size of my shop. Oh yeah, yeah, that could have landed on my foot. That would have been disastrous. Seriously, I could have broken my toe. Going forward, I'm going to start wearing work boots in here, I think. I don't normally wear work boots. And you want to know why? They're cumbersome. When you're working in homes with brand new finished surfaces, constantly kneeling and, you know, 
a hard toe is going to scrape up a brand new floor that you just laid. And people say, well, why don't you put RAM board down? Well, I don't want to put RAM board down. RAM board is expensive. It's easier just to be careful. And cheaper. Oh, my shin. That's going to be bruised tomorrow. I know it. Okay, so there's an 8-foot remnant. At 26 inches. So I can make... That's 8, 8, and 6. I can make a nice box mantle out of that, which I believe... This job I quoted for. There's a whole laundry list of things to do at this job, so we'll see how progress is. Can I put this guy up too? Oh man, my shin, I feel like it's bleeding. Can you feel something bleeding? Doctors watching. Oh. Yeah, that hurts, but it's not bleeding. Okay, it's been an hour. I think that's pretty good for a uh, pretty good. That's pretty good for a good. I'm having some problems with my words today. You ever just have those days where you just feel like you can't speak properly? I have them all the time. Should I do a glue up and then cut it? No, that's going to be a pain. So what I'll do is this. I took away that sheet already. Why did I do that? So stupid. I'll use this one. We'll use this one, and we'll use the little trap, which is meant for cross-cutting plywood. We could use another, we could use a uh, full-size 10-foot track if you wanted to, but why would you want to? It's just cumbersome. You know what? I am going to put those long pieces back on again. Imagine if I had actually dropped that on my toe and broken it. It would have been literally for nothing. Literally for no reason at all. Here I am doing it again. Let's try not to drop this on our toes. Mm hmm. And then, one, don't want that to fall. Or that one. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Still recording or is it out of juice? No. Still going. A lot of juice. It just doesn't have a lot of memory. All right. I'll slap those two boards together. Like thus. Put 
get all that dust. Hopefully I have my trusty dust collection system from Centec, which I purchased at full price. Because I'm still a nobody. I don't get I don't get free stuff. Like some other guys on the interwebs. On the interwebs. I can hear upstairs that my daughter is being fed. She goes, blah, 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 blah. It's pretty cute. Yesterday, I think one of the reasons why I had such difficulty with uh, the glue up. Number one, my miter was too tight. I thought I was being smart by setting it to 45 and a hair instead of 45 and a half or 46. Number two, the tape I was using was delicate tape, which doesn't stick very well. Which meant that when I lifted the piece to flip it over, because I am doing this single-handed, well, I have two hands, but I'm doing it by myself. What happened was uh, the tape sort of separated a little bit and prevented a nice tight joint. So I'm going to use the good stuff. I mean, it's all the same brand, just different types of tape. Can't really make tape more interesting. I mean, I find some things interesting like that, but I know a lot of people don't. My wife's one of those people that has no interest in random facts. I realize they're random and probably not useful to most people. But I don't like turning away knowledge. I don't like to be dismissive of things that I may not be interested in. Because one day, that information, that knowledge, may come in useful. <sighs> Square. A tiny little square. One of my dearest friends who is a builder gave me this square. As you can tell, it's seen better days. It's obviously never been used, but Midland. I don't even think that store exists anymore. It probably wasn't even his. He probably stole it from his dad. <laughs> I bet that's what it was. Now, oh, good grief, she's just going nuts on that food up there. Okie dokie. I'm going to go like so. And about 60. Let's go 60. No, I better go bigger. Those bump outs have such terrible buildup of mud in the corners, drywall mud, that the front of the opening might be 59 and three quarters. The back of the opening might be 59 and one quarter. It really depends on how good the drywall guys are, and I realize now that I've put a big mark right in the surface that I don't want to have any blemishes on. I'm leaving my sweat prints everywhere. Like, what is this? Why is my sweat so dirty? Disgusting. Disgusting pig. Okay. Focus. Two more cuts, baby. And then we glue up 
and then I can get back to my family. My wife hates it when I come down here. All the wives and girlfriends out there. Most of us are not coming down here to escape. Men. Well, this is an opinion of mine. It might not be fact, but men like to feel useful. And doing garage things makes us feel useful. But yeah, we're not escaping. I do enjoy it, obviously, but it's not because I'm trying to dodge my wife. Is delicious. I'm going to have something else. Natural lime? Is it natural? Yeah, something's up with the alignment of my saw. It keeps tearing up all the splinter guard, especially on the little track. Yeah, that isn't even 90 degrees. Something's up with my saw. Look at all that tarot. That is atrocious. Oh, that's because I had my blade on the wrong side. That's fine. These are being cut on site. Regardless. Okay. More tape. More tape. More tape. I'm going to not use instant bond anywhere on this one. That stuff is just, it's just a bit too good, too quick. Instead of three seconds, they should give you, I don't know, 10 seconds. That would be nice. Uh, yeah. Now we do a little flippy. I'm going to have to use some shims. Yeah. So that inch and a half heavier light, whatever it was I did. For the face, which gives you the height. Might have been a bit too much. I don't want to cut a new piece. I don't want to cut that piece anymore. That's just, just no way that's happening. That's already been double beveled. So I just need a few shimmy shimmies. I'm going to load it up with glue, like a ton of glue. Ridiculous, obscene amount of glue. Do I have any shims? I have a better idea. Or do I just get the table saw going? Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll just cut two or three strips at, I think an eighth of an inch should suffice. Big sigh. I'm really annoyed about that track saw. That. And we'll get the fence on. Shooby dooby dooby dee doo. -doo. 
Meet them an inch. Making sketchy cuts with a table saw. I don't even know if this is going to work. It's probably just going to be pulverized. It is MDF after all. Let's see. I do have earplugs. Custom molded ones are kind of a joke. Honestly, I paid $40 for them. And they look like someone's dog chewed them. It's not even that good. Really? I heard all of that. <sighs> okay, so I've got a bunch of these little strips. That's, oh, I don't want that one. That one's trash. Try to not drop this on my foot. Don't tell me that. How is the battery dead? That is so annoying. My phone went and died. Thankfully, I have the audio plugged into the iPad. Do I have a lightning cable here? <clears throat> it's quite dusty in here now. The collection, not great for ripping small pieces. Thin pieces, I should say. I don't remember now if I even had the vacuum on. Anyway. Now. Yeah, I'm still going to. Well, these I can instant bond. I think. Disgusting human being I am. That's way too big of a return for what I need, but... Um, well, that's... That's perfect. That is good. Um, install bond. Well, we're going to go Well, you have to watch the rest on that crappy iPad camera. Let's just do a nice long bead. Like so. And like so. I'm going to be happy when this is done, I tell you. Don't really care that I got the accelerator on the back of the workpiece. It's not that big of a deal. Let me see. 
wonder what the working time is of that spray accelerator spray um Does it last a while? <laughs> that one's not sticking at all. Wood glue. Obviously the working time isn't that great. Also, I think I probably got some of the overspray of the accelerator. On to... onto that glue that I had just applied. Now this bead, I'm going to have to make it pretty big and it's going to have to be way down in the crevice. It's going to be a pain to clean up this glue after I know it. Mm -hmm. She's a crap load of glue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share with you all my mistakes as well as my successes. I'm not afraid to admit that I screw up sometimes. I mean, most times I can recover it. I guess I could probably add some glue onto this too. Don't need both sides. We'll go. go here. Ooh. Go. That should smell nice when I run it through the saw later. Okie dokie. I'm going to fold it once just to squish it. Right. Oh, yes. Get a good squish out of that one. And then fold it twice. Oh, those little squaring... Uh, squaring squares. They're squares that make things square. Also known as squares. I like these. They seem to be of high quality. Clamp there. Um, so. You ever feel like doing this or any sort of woodworking really just invest in some of these clamps quick clamps good enough for beginners if you get into the more serious sort of cabinet making you will probably want to invest in some Cabinet clamps, they just have a larger surface area and they are less susceptible to bowing when you clamp something really, really tight. Okay, so I've got four clamps. I'm just going to remove a small section of the tape just to see what's what's going on underneath. That looks pretty dang good. I am happy with that. The only place that looked like it was going to open up a little bit was the center. But no, I can't see through that here. That is money. I am pleased with that. I'm kind of developing new practices as I go along. Each of these pieces that I built using the miter technique um, they're all glued together a little bit differently. The first one came out absolutely beautifully. Uh, that one I used just tape and instant bond. 
The second one I used instant bond on one side of the center braces and then I wood glued the other side, clamped it, taped it, left it overnight. That one didn't actually turn out that nicely. This one I think is pretty dang good. I should check the other side too though. Okay, that'll sand out. Check it over here. A little tiny bit of gapping, but nothing that won't sand out as well. Marginal, as they say. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to let that set for at least a couple of hours. It's not very warm in here, so this 10 minute glue won't cure in 10 minutes. More like overnight. I'll show you. First one. He's got that slot. All the way around. That's where the ledger was, where the ledger will go. Oh yeah, look at that. That joint is amazing. That is perfect. Is my phone charged? Maybe I can show you. Seven percent. Yeah, I can show you quickly. Video. Here we go. So miters open quite a bit. Not a big deal. Squareness. Not perfect. It's out by a half a degree. Not a big deal. But in terms of tightness of that joint, I mean, just look at that. Pretty darn good. Switch to macro here. Look at that. Don't see any glue. It goes all the way down. Look how straight that one came out too. Perfectly straight. The second one came out with a big banana in it. But that can be remedied. Yeah, pretty tight. I can run my finger over that and I don't get any slivers, no splinters. That is a thing of beauty. So that one's all ready for stain. Well, tomorrow all three of them should be ready for stain. I was supposed to do the install tomorrow. I think I'm going to push it to Tuesday. I don't want to be rushing anything here. But overall, I'm... Pretty pleased with the results thus far. I'm sure the homeowners will be too. Okay, I'll let these dry up. Come back to you later. I am excited. <laughs>